Hello, it's me, Moses Ender. In today's video, I will cover another safety feature of cylindrical lithium ion cells called the PTC. This stands for positive temperature coefficient and is a small element in the main current path of a cell. It limits the current in case of an unintended overload or short circuit of a cell to prevent it from overheating. You will learn what it is, how it works, and in which cases it doesn't. The PTC has one task. It has to limit the current that can be drawn from a cell. In this way, it protects the cell from being overheated and damaged by two high currents, be it intentionally or accidentally in the case of a short circuit. In contrast to the CAD, it should do that in a reversible way. A positive temperature coefficient or PTC material changes its electrical resistance depending on the temperature. The positive in PTC means that the resistance increases with increasing temperatures. A current that flows through a resistive material causes heating. Correctly designed, a PTC element in a current path heats up if the current exceeds a critical limit. With this, the PTC resistance increases and limits the current. In a cylindrical cell, the PTC is included in the top cap. It has a ring shape and is located between the positive terminal and the burst disk of the top cap assembly. That can be nicely seen in this cross section through the top part of an 18650 cell, where you can see a thin dark layer between the positive terminal and the CAD burst disk. If we take a look at the cross section of such a PTC ring, you see that this specific example here has a thin copper layer at the top and bottom, which allows for a good contacting of the PTC ring. There are different material classes that show a PTC behavior. For lithium ion cells, it is typically a polymer material with a conductive additive that is dispersed in it. The exact working principle is that a fine-grained conductive material such as a carbon black is dispersed in a polymer matrix, usually polyethylene or short PE. The volume fraction of the conductive powder has to be sufficiently high so that you have a percolation of the conductive network. The small carbon particles in a polymer matrix are hard to distinguish in a scanning electron micrograph. So there's a nice work from Emiliano Bellotti and his co-authors that studied the influence, the shape and size of the conductive particles using silver-coated glass particles. You can see nicely how the particles are embedded in the polymer in this cold fracture cross-section. The polymer matrix is in its crystalline state. The first trick with that system is the crystalline polymer expands when it starts melting and therefore disconnects the conductive paths at the contact points of the carbon particles. The second trick is that the PE material is cross-linked, which avoids that it immediately melts and becomes a liquid. If this wasn't the case, it would allow a contact between the particles again. This was observed in early research of PTC material and means that after showing a PTC behavior, it transitioned into a negative temperature coefficient or short NTC behavior, where the resistance subtly dropped. This behavior is exactly the opposite of what is required, which would of course defeat the purpose of the PTC. Anyway, modern PTC materials have solved that problem. And if we take a look at the resistance temperature curve of a typical 18650 top cap, we can see that it has a low resistance of around 20 milliohms at room temperature and increases with rising temperatures. At around 130 degrees C, the resistance increases abruptly by around three orders of magnitude. Now, if you imagine this PTC in the main current path of the cell, at low and moderate currents, its effect is insignificant. The resistance of the PTC in the operating temperature range is small enough so that it doesn't affect the operation, with a voltage drop caused by the PTC in the range of millivolts to tens of millivolts. However, if you increase the current further, the joule heating inside the PTC leads to an increase of its temperature. That in turn increases the resistance, leading to even higher losses and consequently a faster rise of temperature. So beyond a critical current, the PTC trips and transitions into a high resistance state, leading to a fast drop in the current to a non-critical level. If you take a look through a thermal camera while exposing the cell to a short with an initial current of 50 amps, you will see that the cell top header has a higher temperature than the rest of the cell, caused by the additional losses in the PTC. This transition to the high resistance state happens typically on a time scale of one second, so it's usually fast enough to prevent damage to the cell. 
but this behavior limits the range of applications the PTC can be applied to. Depending on the PTC properties, thermal design and ambient conditions, the maximum current that a cell with PTC can deliver is typically smaller than 10 amps. In high power cells, the common operating currents are higher than typical triggering currents of the PTC. So in these cases, a PTC cannot be used. These cells rely on the CID for protection plus protection on the system level. A big advantage of the PTC device is that unlike a conventional fuse that can be triggered only once, it is reversible. After the cell has cooled down, the PTC returns to its low resistance state and the cell or battery can be used again without any maintenance required. One thing that you should know is that through repeated thermal cycles, the level of the low resistance state changes slightly. This can be seen in this graph showing an increase of the room temperature resistance by approximately 50%. That means the device will become more sensitive once it has been triggered. If several cells with PTCs are connected in parallel, the effectiveness of the protection is not impacted. In the case of a short, the PTC of one cell will trigger first, either caused by a slightly different current levels or by small cell-to-cell -cell variations of the PTC resistance. Once the first PTC triggers, current through the remaining cells increases abruptly, leading to increased heating in the other PTC, and therefore continuing the cascade of PTC triggering. In a connection of cells in series, once the PTC of the first cell or group of cells in the series connection has triggered, the current is limited and the whole system is protected. This, however, has its limits. If you have a battery with high voltage, meaning you have many cells connected in series, a PTC can even become a safety risk. Let's assume you have a high voltage battery and the PTC of one cell transitions into its high resistance state due to a short circuit. The moment the resistance increases, the whole pack voltage drops over the resistance of this PTC. That means compared to a single cell that experiences a short circuit scenario, the driving force of the current is much higher. If the current that flows through the PTC in its high resistance state produces more heat than the system can dissipate, the PTC will continue to increase its temperature. This can have two effects. First, the ceiling ring or gasket in the top cap can start melting. With the structural support of this insulation ring gone, the top cap and the cell housing can get into contact, causing a hard short circuit on the cell level. Another risk is that with continued heating of the PTC, the polymer with the carbon additive can ultimately ignite, leading to further heating connected with the risk of a spreading fire. So in the case of a high voltage battery, you either have to apply additional safety measures to avoid these PTC effects, or it can be safer to use cells without a PTC and apply additional protection on the system level. The critical battery pack voltage until which cells with PTC can be safely used depends on the PTC properties and the thermal design parameters. But the approximate range where it starts to become critical is at battery voltages of around 30 volts corresponding to around 8 cells in series. So keep this in mind if you build your battery system using cells that have a PTC included. That's it for today. I hope you found this video interesting and learned something new. If so, please leave a like and subscribe. In case you have further questions or remarks, please let me know in the comments below. See you in one of my next videos. Till then, stay charged.